So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to be here to tell you about, uh, to talk with you about science. I'd like to tell you about how cells grow, uh, how this growth is regulated, and then what happens when uh, cell growth is not properly regulated. The first concept I'd like to make is that the biological cell is the unit of life. It's the simplest and smallest life form that exists. Now the question is, how do you define life? Now, as a biologist, I define life as the ability to replicate. In other words, if you take a cell out of a human, and you'd have to do this in the laboratory, and grow it, treat it in the proper way, that cell can exist on its own and, uh, and live on its own. But what is replication? What do we mean when we say replication for, for cells? Uh, well, replication is where one cell, of course, goes to two cells, go to four cells. But it's a little bit more complicated than that because although this seems very simple, this process, it's actually two processes happening at the same time. It's growth and division. Now, it's not that simple because cells don't simply replicate, grow and divide. Uh, this occurs in a very controlled, regulated way. Cells have to grow at a specific time in a specific place. Uh, and uh, indeed, they also have to grow at a very specific rate. And how do cells know how to do this? And this is where a protein called TOR comes into the picture. Uh, this, again, is a cell. If we look into the cell, we'll find a protein which is called TOR. And TOR is what is controlling the growth of the cell. This is what tells the cell how, what to do, when to grow, when not to grow. I like to think of this as the brain of the cell. And what controls TOR are uh, receptors on the surface of the cell which bind growth factors and nutrients. And these send a bio this activates a biochemical pathway which eventually goes into the cell to control cell, uh, TOR and activate cell growth. Now, it's not quite this simple. Uh, we uh, discovered TOR in 1991, and we and others have been working on this for 20 years, over 20 years now. And, uh, the state of knowledge resembles something more like this. <laughs> now, the word TOR, T-O-R, stands for target of rapamycin. And this is rapamycin. It's an organic uh, molecule. And what's interesting, this hot compound has a very interesting history because it's a natural molecule found in nature. It actually comes from uh, a soil bacterium. So it's a product made by a soil bacterium. And it's a bacterium that was found in the soil uh, in Easter Island, which is known by the locals as Rapa Nui, which is why this uh, compound is called rapamycin. So how did we uh, discover TOR? Well, we used rapamycin as a sort of molecular bait, and we went fishing in a cell. A cell has about 10,000 different cells and many copies of each one of these uh, proteins. And we wanted to fish out the one particular protein which rapamycin binds. So rapamycin binds the TOR protein and inhibits it. So we wanted to fish out this one protein among the 10,000 in this soup, which is uh, the inside of a cell, uh, to discover that one protein. So we uh, used rapamycin as a bait, uh, and that bound specifically to the TOR protein and allowed us to, to isolate the TOR protein. Now, once we had the TOR protein, uh, how did we understand what the function of this protein is? How did we understand that its role is to control cell growth? Well, here's an experiment done not in our laboratory, but in a laboratory of a colleague in America by the name of Tom Neufeld. He's a professor in Minnesota, and he works with Drosophila. And this is the liver of a fruit fly. So flies have livers, in case you didn't know. Uh, and what he did here was to uh, selectively inactivate TOR uh, in these two uh, cells. And what you can see is these cells end up being much smaller than the neighboring wild-type cells. So the obvious interpretation of this experiment is that the role of TOR is to control cell growth and thereby cell size. Now there is a dark side about TOR too, uh, and that is that uh, when TOR becomes defective, uh, and it can be defective because it picks up a mutation, or the receptor which is upstream of it uh, picks up a mutation, or some other change happens in the cell where TOR is not working the way it's supposed to work. And this then has uh, been found leads to a large number of diseases 
Many of the, these diseases are characterized by inappropriate cell growth, like uh, cancer, uh, but also other kinds of diseases, metabolic diseases like diabetes. So how do we actually know that TOR will cause cancer? Well, let me show you an experiment we did in the lab. We made a mouse which overexpresses the TOR protein in the liver, only in the liver, in this one uh, uh, organ of the mouse. At 20 weeks, this is what the liver looks like. You can see these white nodes here. These are individual tumors coming out of this liver. You can see there is growth here where there should not have been growth. But how do we actually know that TOR is responsible in the liver for these uh, tumors? Well, we can do another experiment. We can do the same thing with another mouse, but now treat this mouse with rapamycin, which, remember, binds and inhibits TOR. So even though it's overexpressed, it's inhibited. And this is what the liver looks like. So as you can see, this is a rather healthy, normal-looking liver uh, compared to the tumorous uh, liver. So this tells us, because rapamycin blocks TOR, that it is indeed TOR which is driving that inappropriate growth to cause the tumor. Now, TOR has another interesting role in cells. What it does is it drives aging of the cell. So it causes the cell to age. So this is a natural process, and it's driven by TOR. This raises another possibility, an interesting possibility. And that is, if we block TOR with rapamycin, we might be able to block the aging process. So now we can start a very philosophical discussion. Do we want to extend lifespan? And if so, for how long? <laughs>